De Profundis I place my trust in the Lord, I am certain of his word. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleading. If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness, for this I revere you. My soul is waiting for the Lord, more than a watchman for daybreak. Let the watchman count on daybreak, and Israel on the Lord. Israel indeed will he redeem from all its iniquity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Prayer to the Holy Spirit Come, Holy Spirit, come through the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Come, Holy Spirit, come through the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Come, Holy Spirit, come through the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Prayer for the Souls in Purgatory Lord Jesus, have mercy on the souls detained in purgatory. It was for their salvation that you took on our human nature and suffered a most painful death. Have mercy on their burning desire to see you. Have mercy on their tears of repentance. Through the merits of your passion, remit the sentence they incurred by their sins. Dear loving Jesus, may your blood descend on those dear souls. May it shorten their time of atonement. And may they soon be called to eternal happiness in your presence. Let us pray. Lord, hear the prayers we offer up to you this day for the consolation of our deceased brothers and sisters and grant them a place of refreshing light and peace. Hear also the prayers which those souls will offer up to you for our intention that we might ultimately obtain through their intercession the graces for which we pray for. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Holy Spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. O God, you've instructed the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant it to the same Holy Spirit. We may always be truly wise, Rejoice in his consolation to the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Infant Jesus of Cebu, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening. Our spiritual reading tonight will be taken once again in the book of Father Martin Berlieu on the poor souls in purgatory a 30-day novena. We are on the sixth day. Let me begin this spiritual reading by uh, narrating to you a story given to Fra Alberto by no less than Saint Padre Pio of Petrocina about a soul in purgatory who appeared to him at around six o'clock in the evening, right after 
his vesper. So he said to Pro Alberto, I was praying in the choir alone in front of the little chapel. And while I was reflecting on the passion and death of our Lord Jesus, all of a sudden, I was disturbed by a footstep from a slight noise becoming louder and louder. And I look around, I could not see anybody. Then, to make it more bizarre, I saw the candles of the altar being lifted and even the flower vases, they were being transferred. And so, disturbed, I shouted and I said, who is there? And nobody was answering. I thought it might be a thief trying to steal something from the chapel who did not see me in the choir. But then there was silence. For almost five minutes, I don't see anybody moving. I resume my prayer. As soon as I closed my eyes and started praying to the Lord, I was again disturbed by the footstep. This time it was really loud that nobody can just take it for granted. Then I even saw the candle falling down from the statue of Our Lady of Grace. And I said, who are you? And nobody was answering. But then I saw a shadow through the lights of the tabernacle. I saw a shadow of a friar. And I said, oh, I got him. I shouted, Pratello, what are you doing there? He said, I am cleaning the altar and fixing the flowers and cleaning also the candles. And Padre Pio was a little surprised. Cleaning in the dark? Who are you? I am one of the Capuchins who died and I am being punished by the Lord in his divine justice, as well as mercy, to spend my purgatory here in this altar, to clean it every moment, aside from the uh, purifying fire of purgatory that I am suffering with, I am also suffering because of the deprivation of the love of God. And Padre Pio once again asked, why, why do you spend your purgatory here? And at the same time, you are there, burning. Yeah, because I was really negligent when I was in charge of the sacristy. I always leave the church, especially the altar, disordered and at the same time dirty. And I was a bit lazy to clean it because, you know, there are many things to be done in the sacristy, many things to prepare, and sometimes I don't have time to go to the altar. And for this reason, I'm being punished to stay here till Christ will come again. But because of your prayers, when you said in general, for the souls in purgatory, I was included in those prayers. Now I am allowed to ask prayers directly from you. I am sent by God. What do you want? I want more prayers and more masses to be able to escape this fire from purgatory and to satisfy fully my thirst for that love of God, the deprivation of the love of God is the greatest pain. And Padre Pio said, all right, Pratello, I'll pray for you now. In fact, 
I lost my superior, whether I could celebrate Mass for you now. And the soul of this Pratello disappeared. Fra Alberto, who narrated this story as coming from Padre Pio, said there was no uh, additional information coming from Padre Pio what happened to the soul. So one day, I met again Padre Pio and I asked, what happened to that soul whom you saw in the sacristy at 6 p.m.? Well, the answer of Padre Pio was very general. He said, you know, Fra Alberto, there are as many living visiting this monastery as there are as many souls of the dead coming for help in this monastery. And with the prayer and the masses that I celebrate by His grace and goodness, all of them, they leave this place contented, very happy. So Pra Alberto said, I surmise with the answer of Padre Pio that this Pratello who died and was punished to make his purgatory here in this little chapel has already gone happy to the kingdom of heaven. So now let's explain what is the greatest uh, suffering in purgatory. The greatest suffering in purgatory is not so much the cleansing fire, but the deprivation of God and number two, the deprivation of heaven. So let's read from this book on the poor souls of purgatory by Father Martin. The greatest suffering in purgatory is not the fire, as fierce as it may be. The poor souls revealed to Saint Faustina Kowalska that their greatest torment was the longing for God. And this is taken from the diary of Saint Faustina. In this word, we do not understand the intensity of the suffering caused by being deprived of God because we do not see God directly. We do not love Him with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our souls, with all our strength. And we don't think of God very often. But the souls in purgatory have seen God on their day of particular judgment. And according to St. Ambrosius, their eyes beheld a great spectacle. God showed himself to them with all the adorable perfection. He imprinted his image so vividly in their spirit. He infused them so fiercely with the glory of his infinite majesty that they think of him continually and love him with a love that is pure and complete. The insatiable love, this deprivation, this hunger, this thirst for God torments and tortures the souls in purgatory. Because of this deprivation of God's love, these souls are continually dying without dying. And the church calls this condition a death, and rightly so. Lord, deliver them from death. St. Catherine of Genoa, another mystic, beheld a vision of purgatory, which she described as the great place of suffering, and at the same time, great joy. Those who die in the state of grace and face the just judge 
see themselves as they were created by Him and are ashamed of their fallen state and attachment to sin. They, therefore, suffer out of burning love and the desire to be with God. But they know they are not ready. They embrace the pain of purgatory to purify themselves, to be made worthy, to be with God in heaven. To get an idea of this torment, imagine a person dying for lack of air. See the efforts that person makes to gulf a little much needed oxygen. How the chest is distended and the veins bulge in the neck. It is a terrible struggle between life and death. But what is a little air when compared to God? What is it then to die without God, deprived of the soul's need for God, who is the soul's breath? What living hunger, what painful agony. Now we reflect on the deprivation of heaven, the second greatest suffering of the souls in purgatory. Truly, the soul in purgatory is not exiled from its earthly native land, but from its true native heaven. It has been the splendors of its blessed homeland when it appeared before the Lord, who is the joy and the lights of saints. It recalled that loving invitation, Come, blessed of my Father. Yours is the kingdom which has been prepared for you since the creation of the world. It so contemplated all its magnificence. Now unable to enter the homeland, it has to wait for days, weeks, years, centuries before being able to plunge into the torrent of goodness who is God himself. My God, what an exile, what a cruel delay. How heart-rending are the sufferings of the unfortunate soul. When will I be able to see my homeland, my family in heaven? When will I be reunited to my parents, my brothers and sisters who are in the glory of God and stretch out their arms to me when will I be invited to unite my soul to Jesus, my celestial spouse? O oh, eternal gates, open up, open up, poor unfortunate soul. It hears a mysterious voice reply, not yet, later. Dear souls, we can open those gates for you. Don't you know that prayer and charity are the golden keys that will open the gates of heaven? Pray continuously, and those souls in exile will arise to heaven, to their beloved homeland, where they will sing forever the mysteries and glories of God. When the captive children of Israel had been taken far from their homeland, unable to see the shores of the Euphrates, they sat down sadly on a strange shore. They wept for the memory of Jerusalem. They had no words of joy, no songs of glory. Their harps hanging from the willow trees on the shore were silent. The Babylonians asked them, children of Israel, why do you weep? It is because we remember Zion, our homeland. We remember and we regret. But 
exiled children of Zion. If you sung to suit your suffering and dispel your sadness, sing a few songs from your homeland. Sing your national anthem. Sing. Can children in exile sing patriotic hymns on strange shores? Far from her, we remember. We regret, we sigh. We weep and we tearfully await the consolation of our return. O Jerusalem, may our tongue be welded to our palate should we one day forget you. The souls of our brethren are detained by divine justice, far from the homeland heaven. And above all, the love of God, which they lovingly long for. They are condemned to the painful exile on strange shores, which are a thousand times more desolate than the house of this world. There they also weep as they remember their heavenly homeland. Their tears differ from ours as heaven differs from the earth and time differs from eternity. Humans, unless they are ill, instinctively seek nourishment. If they stop eating, being neither sick nor dying, the hunger would never stop growing because that instinct would never diminish. Imagine if there was in this world only one bread that could stem the hunger of any creature. Man would suffer intolerable torment in order to have some of that bread. Imagine if only gazing upon that bread was enough to stem that hunger. His instinct would urge him to seek it in order to be contented. If he were told with certainty that he could never see the bread, then that for him would be hell. He would be in the state of damnation, deprived of all hope of seeing God, true bread, true Savior. But the souls in purgatory do have the hope of one day contemplating that living bread and of being filled with it. Meanwhile, they suffer from hunger and remain in their torment as long as they are unable to stem that hunger with the true bread, Jesus Christ, true God and Savior, our love. Let me describe this by citing you another incident that happened in the life of Saint Gemma. Saint Gemma, who died on the year 1903 in the city of Lucca, Italy. She narrated, it was 9.30 p.m. She was praying in the chapel and she was terrified when she felt a hand on her shoulder. And when she looked back, it was a lovely lady dressed in white. But since she was beautiful, instead of being frightened, I was prevented from running because there was some attraction in her beauty. And so I asked, who are you? And the lady said, I am a soul from purgatory about to go to heaven. I am Mother Maria Teresa of the infant Jesus. I still have few days to stay here in purgatory. And I'm grateful because Gemma, you have been praying for the souls in purgatory. I benefited so much from those prayers. That's why I'm here and I'm begging you to continue praying for me. So, Saint Gemma spent 
16 days in torment. Remember, Saint Gemma is also a mystic, similar to Padre Pio. And she said, in those moments, she complained to the Lord. And she said to the Lord, Oh God, I am not good enough in prayer as the saints that I know. But whatever I am now, I am doing this prayer. And the torment that I suffer in my soul now, I am offering it as a lack of reparation. For the soul of Mother Maria Teresa of the child Jesus to finally go to heaven after 16 full days at 1.30 in the morning, the Blessed Mother appeared to me, St. Gemma said. And of course, the sight of the Blessed Mother was so beautiful, so magnetic, so attractive, that I also longed to go to heaven right away to be with the Blessed Mother. And she told me, the time has arrived. At first, I didn't understand what that means. And then, when she answered my sight to who was coming, lo and behold, a very beautiful lady, so shiny. And she asked, who is this? I could not recognize her. She's so beautiful. And she said, Gemma, thank you. I am Mother Maria Teresa of the Child Jesus. I am going to heaven just now. And I want to pass here in order to tell you how much I am grateful to you. For eternity, I'll pray for you that one day you'll also be in heaven with us, with me and with Jesus, with God the Father, and with the Blessed Mother. My thirst for the love of God has finally been fully satisfied starting today. And Gemma said, I saw Jesus leading Saint Maria Mary Teresa to the kingdom of heaven. And she was accompanied by her guardian angel. And they flew so quickly that their appearance disappeared before my sight. And I was so grateful to God that the humble prayer, my little pain, my sacrifice, my oblation of myself in union with the passion and death of Jesus has helped this soul in purgatory to enter the gates of heaven and to be in paradise forever. Let us therefore intensify our prayer to the Lord to deliver millions of souls still stuck there in purgatory who are so deprived of the love of God, so deprived of the kingdom of heaven. Our Father who art in heaven, gather your children out of exile. I invite all of you, therefore, to join us in this 30-day novena for the poor souls in purgatory. If you have not yet started, there's still time. Actually, 30 days can be prolonged even after November. Remember all these souls who appeared to Padre Pio, to Gemma Galgani, to uh, uh, Veronica Giuliani, Saint Veronica Giuliani. It was not exactly November. Why November? Why do we do the no November novena? Because precisely the mother of the church a lot of this month of November, as the month wherein all of us here in this church militant would pray 
for the souls in purgatory to alleviate them from their excruciating suffering on the purifying fire in purgatory and their deprivation of the love of God, which is the greatest suffering in purgatory. To be sure, we deliver our departed ones in purgatory. Let us not waste also our pains, our sufferings, during these days of lockdown, when we lost our job, our loved ones, our savings, even our house, because of the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. Let us unite our pain with the passion and death of Jesus for the release of the souls in purgatory, especially for our loved ones. Surely, with our prayers and with the masses that we ask some priests to offer, they will soon see heaven and above all, the love of God. Their greatest torture here in purgatory is the deprivation. And if we pray for them, then eventually that great deprivation becomes the greatest satisfaction of their thirst, which is the love of God. They will be ever grateful for us, for our prayers, sacrifices, and Holy Mass, especially this month of November, or even after November, if we didn't have enough time during this month. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Litany for the Faithful Departed Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Father in heaven, almighty God, have mercy on the faithful departed. Son of God, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on the faithful departed. Holy Spirit, bread of life. Have mercy on the faithful departed. Holy Trinity, the one true God. Have mercy on the faithful departed. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for the faithful departed. Saint Michael the Archangel. Pray for the faithful departed. My holy angel and angels of the faithful departed, Pray for the faithful departed. Community of blessed spirits. Pray for the faithful departed. Saint Joseph and Saint John the Baptist. Pray for the faithful departed. Holy patriarchs and prophets. Pray for the faithful departed. Holy apostles and evangelists. Pray for the faithful departed. Saint Stephen and Saint Lawrence. Pray for the faithful departed. Holy Martyrs. Pray for the faithful departed. Saint Gregory and Saint Augustine. Pray for the faithful departed. Holy Doctors, Popes and Confessors. Pray for the faithful departed. Saint Anne and Saint Mary Magdalene. Pray for the faithful departed. Saint Catherine, Saint Ursula and her companions. Pray for the faithful departed. Holy virgins and widows. Pray for the faithful departed. Holy saints of God. Pray for the faithful departed. Be their conciliator. Lord, forgive them. Be their conciliator. Lord, save us. By your holy and tender name, Lord. Have mercy on the souls of the faithful departed. 
By your great mercy, Lord, have mercy on the souls of the faithful departed. By your bitter passion and your sacred wounds, Lord, have mercy on the souls of the faithful departed. By your precious blood and by your death, Lord, have mercy on the souls of the faithful departed. We are poor sinners, Lord. Hear our prayer. Have mercy on all the faithful departed, Lord. Hear our prayer. Remit the sentence incurred by their sins, Lord. Hear our prayer. Grant them your paternal inheritance, Lord. Hear our prayer. Invite them to contemplate your divine beauty, Lord. Hear our prayer. Fill them with your unlimited bounty, Lord. Hear our prayer. Fulfill their total desire for salvation, Lord. Hear our prayer. Give eternal rest, especially to the souls of our relatives, friends, and benefactors, Lord. Hear our prayer. Have mercy on the soul for whom no one prays for, Lord. Hear our prayer. May the offering of the Holy Mass and Holy Communion be beneficial to them, Lord. Hear our prayer. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, forgive them. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, sweet Jesus, hear them. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, grant them eternal rest. Salve Regina. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Prayer for a Happy Death Divine Heart of Jesus, grant me the grace to always live according to your will. Be that during the most beautiful, joyous, most important hours of my life, as well as during the most difficult moments, so that I may always be ready for my final hour. Give me the courage to abandon everything to your love, even my very life if necessary. O Jesus, by your holy and painful passion, grant that when you come for me, you will find me awake like the good servant, with sincere repentance, a good confession, and armed with the sacrament of the sick. Lord, do not abandon me in my final struggle on earth, when I will be faced with Satan's fury. May your holy mother, Saint Michael the Archangel, and his angels, assist and protect me against all temptations in my final hour on earth. May they console me and strengthen me in my agony. Grant me at that hour a strong faith, a firm trust, a deep love, and great patience. Grant that I might commit myself with full conscience into your hands and that I fall asleep in your holy peace. In your infinite goodness and your great mercy, Remember me, Lord Jesus. Amen.